coming up on Star Salvation. The will of innovation. There we go, some char. Opa! Iron Chef Alex Garnaschelli and Eddie Jackson, winner of Food Network Star Season 11, will mentor eliminated finalists from Food Network Star through a series of challenges that will prepare one of them for the second chance of a lifetime. Monterey, Yaku, welcome back. You guys have reached the third stop on the road to salvation. Really, really good job. Thank you. Thank you. Let's bring in our next eliminated finalist. What's up? Dub! I'm back. Feels good. Feels good. Feels good. Feels good. Feels good. I'm back here Feels to take good. it to the top and eventually win it. Good to see you, brother. Yeah. I am psyched. Whew. So, Rob, welcome. Thank you. Rob, everyone was impressed by your cooking. Unfortunately, you began to second guess yourself during your presentations. And with that, you lost a lot of the humor and big personality that helped you stand out. Oh, yeah. Now, Rob, for your last Food Network Star Challenge, you had to successfully meld two mismatched ingredients. I'm hoping that's hummus. Determined at random by the so-called wheel of mythicality. Oh, geez, 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 on it. Don't worry, we would not make you do that again. <laughs> Absolutely not, because we have the will of innovation instead. <laughs> In this challenge, you're going to need to show your culinary authority by creating an appetizing and innovative dish, using ingredients that, as you can see, are far from innovative. All right, Rob, you're new to the Salvation Kitchen. So, Alex, how about we go ahead and spin this wheel and find out what Rob is going to be stuck with, I mean, uh, featuring. <laughs> I'm ready. Come on, hit me. Oh, yeah. Back in my wheelhouse, I love these kind of games. Ooh, ah. that's a good one. Okay. Box rice pilaf. All right. You got about five boxes of that back at home. I got this one. All right, Alex, let's spin that wheel again and find out what Monterey's going to be cooking with. Alex spins, then what do I get? Oh, oh my god. Canned liver. I'm so afraid of this liver pate right now. Oh, man. One more spin of the wheel and find out what Big Yaku is going to be cooking with. Box what? mac and cheese. I can take that. You sure? I'm making for the kids, so. All right. I'll definitely put a new spin on box macaroni and cheese. I'm ready for this challenge. So you're going to have 30 minutes to cook, and then you're going to have 60 seconds to present to Alex and I about why your dish is innovative. And your time starts now! My mind is going about a mile a minute right now. Look out! I'm trying to figure out what the hell I'm gonna do with canned liver pate. Uh, liver pate? There's a traditional Vietnamese sandwich called a banh mi, and they use liver pate as like a spread. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna turn this liver pate into a dressing for a banh mi inspired noodle salad. I've eaten a lot of weird stuff, but canned liver has not been one of them. I'm bringing together rice noodles, pickled red onions, fresh herbs like cilantro, and mint and Thai basil, and some toasted macadamia nuts. It's gonna be a tough one. Beautiful. I'm gonna make chorizo mac and cheese balls. There we go, some char. I'm gonna brown my chorizo, add a little bit of the powdered cheddar to it, and then make a separate cheddar cheese sauce. When you hear macaroni and cheese, you picture this bowl of cheesy macaroni and a spoon. But I'm gonna innovate it, turn it into a golden crispy ball so you can eat it on the go. Rob, what you making? Um, you got me, pal. <laughs> Growing up, my mom used to make stuffed peppers, stuffed tomatoes, so I'm gonna go with mom on this one. I'm making a meaty rice peel off stuffed tomato with a mock risotto. <laughs> I'm browning onions, tomato paste, ground lamb, ground pork, ground beef, and ground turkey. I'm adding the straight up rice peel off with the seasoning packet. I do this at home all the time. I'm putting my meat and rice mixture in the tomatoes, topping off with some panko breadcrumb and cheese, and putting them in the oven. Whew. 15 minutes, guys. So you've got the canned liver pate. Mm -hmm. This particular ingredient, is this hard to be innovative with this? It's more using the texture of the liver, but kind of putting in a different flavor to it. I think that's very innovative. 
I have the hardest ingredient to work with, so I'm just spending so much time on making sure that this pate is tasty. So I get thinly sliced onions, crushed garlic, saute that down, and then deglaze the pan with cognac. Opa! That's gonna add a little bit of richness that I am positive this can of liver pate is severely lacking. Ugh. Rob, you're the new guy back in the kitchen. Oh yeah. You got a lot going on. Making a little mock risotto. Yeah, I only nice. used uh, two of the seasoning packages. I used yeah. all four boxes. Don't forget, innovation. No problem, Alex. I'm using this crappy pilaf two ways. That's innovative enough. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes, get it done. Oh, yeah. I taste this liver, and it's all wrong. If I don't dial in these flavors, this dish is going to be a disaster. So I'm putting in rice vinegar, sriracha, lime juice, everything I can get my little hands on to make this taste like people food. Here we go, two minutes, we get to crunch time. All right. For my chorizo mac and cheese ball, I'm gonna make a sriracha brown sugar ketchup. It's gonna add a little bit of heat. I've done sweet and spicy in the past. This week, I'm going to it because it goes so well with that creamy cheese with the little spice of the chorizo. I'm taking my tomatoes out of the oven, finishing off on the grill. I don't need the top to cook anymore. I just want a little bit more heat on the tomato itself. 30 seconds, y'all. We got 30 seconds left. 30 seconds. Take a step back and look at what you're doing. Five, four, three, two, one, stop. Yeah, baby. Up top. OK, Yaku, you have 60 seconds to tell us how you innovated with your ingredient, box mac and cheese. Macaroni and cheese, you normally need a fork or a knife. You got to carry it around, eat like this. My wife doesn't like people dirty in the floor. So the innovative part is the macaroni and cheese ball was on the go. Even if I dropped it, it wouldn't really make a mess. So what I did was I added a little chorizo, coated it in panko, gave it a deep fry. I did a sriracha ketchup brown sugar sauce to add a little bit of sweet and it cut through the richness of the chorizo and the cheese. All right, time's up. I definitely get that this is a signature thing of yours, that little hot sauce sugar thing you like so much. I would have really liked if you let go of your little blankie, your little whoobie, and just let that heat from the chorizo be enough. I'm disturbed. This is good. I love texture. And just right off the bat, I got a nice crunch from that panko. When you present to us, I really need you to sell me on how does it taste you said my wife doesn't want me to make a mess. I didn't know if you were talking about a really handy vacuum cleaner or food. OK, Monterey, come up and tell us how you innovated with canned liver pate. <laughs> you ready? I'm just reminding myself to stay poised, try to be authoritative. I've never been to Vietnam, but I love Vietnamese flavor, so I'm thinking on me. But I can't just do that. You know, I got to twist it, turn it on its head, try something new. I did a noodle salad with the great flavors that I love from a banh mi with the fresh basil and mint and cilantro. And then I turned that liver pate into a nice creamy dressing for my rice noodles. So I really hope you all enjoy my banh mi noodle salad. I'm not going to lie to you. I saw your dish and I thought, it looks weak. But this is great. There's nothing in here that doesn't belong. <laughs> The scallions, the Thai basil, the macadamia nuts, swirl it all together and it just makes sense. <laughs> you took liver pate and you transformed it totally. There's no way I would know what this is. Awesome, thank you. You have that spunkiness that's very intriguing and inviting, but you need to continue to work on this. Your body language, you gotta own it. Okay. You said, I've never been to Vietnam, but I love the flavors. Mm -hmm. Tell me why, as a viewer, if you've never been to Vietnam, I should trust you as an authority on Vietnamese food. Um, don't say, gee, I've never been to Vietnam. Just talk about what's good. All right, Rob, tell us why you were innovative with rice pilaf. OK. So I've been a bachelor for a long time and a chef, so there's never any food in my house. There's always box stuff for 99 cents. I went right to my roots with my mom. She always made stuffed cabbage, stuffed tomatoes, stuffed peppers with leftover rice and leftover meats. Then I did a little risotto with it. The little tip on using boxed rice pilaf, always toast it, even if it doesn't call for it because it gives it a nuttiness. You know, I, I hope you dig it. Time's up. 
<laughs> you definitely have personality, my friend. Can't teach that, you can't coach that. Thank you. But the one thing that concerns me is I'm looking for flow. So when you gave the tip, you know, you, you said the tip is, as opposed to just letting it flow in. I'll work on that. Sometimes when you use an ingredient twice, and we're looking for that ingredient, you end up saying, I like this application of it better than better, that one. Right. I think the meat and the rice mixed together and stuffed in the tomato, I think it's really tasty. So I think you did something that's a little bit muddled, but innovative for me, definitely. OK, guys, we want to start off by saying you were all really innovative today. And that's really exciting for us, because yep. that's one of the things we're really looking for in a Food Network star. Monterey, mm -hmm. I got to tell you, I thought that you were the most innovative out of everyone. You took that liver pate and really transformed it. Thank you. But again, we fall back on that authority figure. To be the next Food Network star, when people watch you on TV, they have to know that you know what you're talking about and you're confident in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yaku. We really loved what you did with the chorizo. Recruiting that to mix with the box mac and cheese was innovation at its best. We just felt like we need to connect directly with you as a viewer on how you think your food tastes. So Rob, I love your personality and I can definitely relate to you. The thing is in your presentation, it's all about flow. Your explanations, your tips, your stories all have to be effortless. Just be smooth with it, man. You gotta be a smooth operator. I gotcha. So today in this challenge, they came down to how you presented, described, and sold us your food. First chef that's going to be moving on in Star Salvation is Monterey. Oh. Good job. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, so Yaku, Rob, this was an extremely tough decision for us. I mean, photo finish close. The chef that's going to be moving on in Star Salvation is Yaku. All right, right. Big Rob. Yes, sir. Good job, man. I love your personality, man. Thank you very much. Good, job, Rob. Good, Good luck, up. fellas. Bye. I'm not going anywhere except up. Keep those TVs tuned in.